So uh, overlapping last week, a uh, paragraph or two uh, of uh, Ramju's Diaries, part one, January 13, 1923, the duty of duties. The one important chain event of events in the Monzo taking place for the last 10 days is about the book selling. Vajifdar, Rustam, Kak, and Doctor are the principal parties engaged in this difficult duty, especially the first two. Every day, almost, a new party is approached from the prominent and leading citizens of Bombay to solicit sympathy and help in effecting a quick and complete sale of all the copies of Sri Maharaja's life. The queer situation may well be imagined from the extraordinary jumble of contradictory circumstances the life of a Brahmin master with a Muslim guru and a Parsi disciple, written in the Urdu language, and yet trying to be sold off to persons for whom Urdu might be Greek by salesmen belonging to different castes, professing to lead a spiritual life and yet apparently keen to collect money through the sale of the books, facts which would eclipse the strangest fiction. And yet this complex duty had to be carried out in the face of great opposition carried on by some through rumors and writings in the press trying to paint the affair in the worst colors. While we were playing a game this morning, Baba came and related a dream, which he said he saw overnight. Baba's dream. Baba saw himself going in a train with the Mandalay from the opposite direction of that in which the train was going. An open coffin was coming with a large crowd around it. On inquiring, it was found that it was the coffin of Baba Jar. Thereupon, Baba got down, went to Charbadi Puna. But again, Baba saw Baba Jar to be lying there. The people round about were, however, talking and behaving as if Baba John was dead and gone. Baba then placed his hand on Baba, John's, on Baba John's head, whereupon she got up. On being asked, how is it that people have taken you as dead and gone? Baba John replied, yes, I am really dead. Baba seemed to be uneasy and very weak today. It is almost a fortnight that he has been observing a fast continuously of 24 hours. And there seems no early prospect of this fasting system coming to an end. January 15, 1923. The Pathan in the service of Tipu Baba brought today one bouquet and one garland of flowers from the latter for Baba. In return, Baba also sent with him a garland for, for Tipu Baba and a flower sheet for Abdur Rahman Baba's tomb. The three stages. While explaining to Dr. Cock the reason for the present general depressed condition of the Mandali, Baba said one generally passes through three stages in this line. 
The first is shauk, that is fondness and intense desire to know and experience the unknown and the consequent pleasant expectations. Then comes the second stage, that of disgust, disappointment, and apathy. And the third and last stage is that of realization. All are now in the second stage, which is generally a long one. Hence, you should all pull up, put up with it cheerfully, since you cannot avoid or remedy it. Don't leave me in any case. January 16, 1923, a parade. In the evening at about 7.30, when I came back to the Monzil from, from La Navla, I met with a strange sight. The whole of the Mondali was present in full strength in the back compound and undergoing some military parade under the sharp and ringing commands of Ahmad Khan. The latter, having seen a long service in the army, was seen to be reviving his old spirit with a vengeance. Before I could grasp the situation completely, I was also pushed in the medley by Baba, After about an hour's marching backwards, forwards, with many different tactics of left turn and about turn, the extremely amusing as well as perspiring exercise was brought to an end. It was then that I learned that today being the birthday of Kaka's daughter, he had brought for the Mondali quite a feast-like affair from his house by way of eatables. And on the plea of the rich food requiring drastic exercise for digesting the same, Baba had started the game. At least it afforded an opportunity for Ahmad Khan to take a leading share in an affair, in contrast to his retiring nature and almost forgotten presence in the Mandalay. Patel left for Nagpur in connection with the book selling work. January 17, 1923. Baba's Sleepless Nights. The following notice on the board greeted us early this morning. I was all the time downstairs last night, signed Merwan. The day passed away in routine, excepting for the fact that all were asked to sing instead of conducting the usual proceedings in the Guta which was open today. January 18, 1923. Again last night, Baba was downstairs where he at times slept and walked in the compound throughout the night up to 4 a.m. As per the decision arrived at in the Guta some time ago, the Muslims did not take part in the usual Thursday arty for the first time today. January 21, 1923. After dinner, Baba asked Dr. to write the following notice on the board. Today, Guda, Guta, from 1 to 5 p.m., signed Merwan. 
The proceedings of this book are noted in detail in the minute or minute book kept by Doctor. An interesting dream. The latter again saw an interesting dream today which he describes as follows. So this must be doctor's dream. I saw Baba explaining to the Mandali the subject of experience and realization. Rustam and Kak were promin prominent amongst those gathered there. In reply to my counter questions and by way of giving a practical idea he made me fly in the skies or heavens. The position in which I felt myself floating in space and the clouds was like the shape. In space, in space. In space and the clouds was like the shape of Muhammad in Urdu. The position, however, was not very comfortable. And hence, I told Baba that my back would break thereby. Baba replied, there is no question of the body here. This is simply the form of the spirit that is floating. After giving me this experience, Baba addressing the Mandali said, that this experience will be realized by you after years from now. But in the case of Doctor, a special arrangement has been made by Baba John, and it is that he will get this experience six months after his death. When Doctor repeated this dream before Baba, he was particularly anxious about the latter part of the dream and the hint of experience after death. But Baba explained that in general, one quarter of a dream comes true and hence he would get realization after the time hinted. What does Can it mean after the time hinted? After. after after the time that Baba, Baba John mentioned, which was um, yeah, so after six because, months, six months after his death. Oh, so Baba is confirming. Well, um, Baba is just saying that that in general, one quarter of a dream comes true, and hence no three quarters. Oh, yeah, one quarter, yeah. And hence he would get realization after the time ended. Um, oh. which, which I take to mean six months after his death, yeah? His death, okay. The so poor he mosquito. Is already there. <laughs> January 23, 1923. The poor mosquitoes. As early as 4.30 in the morning, we found the following order on board. All should kill mosquitoes daily from 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. Signed, Merwan. After all had retired for the night, Baba, Dr. Cock, Bailey, and myself went upstairs and sat discussing the plot of a drama which is under consideration to be written by Cock. During the conversations, Baba said, the present internal working which is now in full swing, will tone down a little bit after J February 15, 1923. And in this working of Maharaj, I have also been dragged in internally. Hence, it is that I am fasting for 24 hours every day. After the 15th February, I shall become my old self again. And in a way, the atmosphere here will become more cheerful than it was at Charney Road. 
Maho, could you unmute and continue, please? Yes. Okay. Mm. So from January 26, 1923. Oh, uh, no, to the top of the top, order. Oh, I'm sorry. Top paragraph page, too. Yeah. Page 140. Ramju's diary in Manzil. This is the last internal working of Maharaj, the result of which will come exactly after 12 months, whether we work for it or not. The result is bound to come. Maharaj also may either come out of his cage, pass the 12 months of his life therein, or come over to Bombay as it may take his fancy. Now, January 26, 1923, the Butch customers. The book selling duty afforded meetings with persons of varied thoughts and standard. The other day when I approached a rich relation of mine with great expectation of selling a good many copies, I was caughtly met with a question. The question, since how many days have you taken to this business? I had to bid a quick retreat after forcing a couple of copies on my personal request. In another instance, I tried to bring around another relation on the merits of the book, but found him very unconvinced. So by way of playing a trump card, I, triumph, I, tri I triumphantly said, at least you cannot deny the high opinion expressed by such an eminent authority on the subject as Khaja Hassan Nizami. My amazement may be imagined when the worthy who, although he had considerable rupees, an ass and pies with him, was hardly competent enough to give opinion on, my, on any literature, far short of spirituality, unhesitantly, blurred out, what? Khaja Hassan Nizami? Oh, he's a first class. Well, again, I had to exercise desertion as the better part of valor and backpedaled, contented with the sale of a couple of copies. Contrary to this, Rustam and Vajifdar came across a solicitor in his office one day. After just scanning a few pages of the book here and there, he asked them what they wanted him to do. By way of a joke, Rustam said, buy a hundred copies. Immediately, the gentleman brought out his checkbook and wrote off a check for 300 rupees. It, trans it transpired in subsequent contacts with him that he himself had some personal inkling through experience of the affairs beyond the apparent materialism of the world. While he was a prominent merchant in Bombay, having a huge business establishment in his own plateau building, well known in public and government circles and carrying on business externally with all pomp and show, when he came in close contact with our book selling party, he was found to be leading a very plain and simple life privately. In a corner of the luxuriously and costly furnished building, in a small room, which had nothing but a small piece of matting as the only furniture, 
this apparently material man was leading a right loyal spiritual life. Loyal spiritual life. Good term. Next is the CID interested. Another noteworthy meeting of mine in the connection was with Mr. Benjamin Tagui, a C CLD officer in Bombay. On the strength of old family acquaintanceship, I approached him and found him unexpectedly attentive to my story. In fact, he kept on calling me twice and thrice when he used to cross-examine me systematically in an innocent, matter-of-fact way. I thought him to be deeply interested in spiritual matters when in the last meeting he told me plainly that his interest in our affairs was professional. The CID was deeply interested in the manzil. The premises were watched, some of the members followed and shadowed, messages and communications in the post scrutinized and so on. The way the domestic life of the manzil was described in detail by the CID officer proved it clearly. But my frank answers to his questions convinced him and explained away his own pieces of news gathered bit and bit that the manzil was what it was claimed for, for it to be a gathering of devotees serving and following a personality which they believed to be supernatural and not a secret society with political or criminal motives. Then he himself purchased five copies of the book from me. Now, January 28, 1923. The Supernatural. For the last month or so, Baba has been living a supernatural life from the external point of view also. A miracle or extraordinary phenomenon may dazzle one for a moment unless it is not passed over as a mere coincidence. But the present living of Baba, defying nature with a venegance, if taken to by, if taken to by an ordinary man, would surely land him in an early grave or a lunatic asylum. While in spite of it all, Baba is the very picture of activity and action in the manzel. What with the continuous fasting as he eats and drinks only once after every 24 hours, and that too very little, he takes raw tobacco every now and then, throughout night and day, chewing it on, on an empty stomach, a thing which intensifies thirst. Then every evening he takes a hot bath daily with about three or four scores of gallons of water. Page 142, which according to doctor from his medical point of view, is extremely weakening to the nerves. On top of it, all Baba is often found restless in bed. And according to Gustaji and doctor, who generally keep about him in the night, he is scarcely, scarcely sleeps. At times, he keeps on walking for hours in the bungalow or compound. Last night was also one of the many such nights passed by Baba 
as is seen by the following notice that we saw on the board as soon as we were out of bed at 4 a.m. as usual. And this is the notice. Last night was a terrible night for me, written, in, written at 2 a.m. by Merwan. While doctor was reading the poet, while doctor was reading the poet, Amir's Divan Miratul Qatir means the mirror of things concealed to Baba. He asked him to write the following couplet therefrom on the notice board. First of all, it is difficult to have a passage in the beloved's lane, but those who pass through it pass away from Wolsey affair, affairs. Now the raw gold. Today the raffle of the steward core was drawn and the prize went to Sherry such an such a Tananda, to Sherry such a Tananda of the Bajan Mandali is a devotional singers of Mahim. This car originally belonged to Hawk and was in a very old condition. In the beginning of the stay in Manzil, Baba had asked the parties concerned to dispose it away as it was at any price. But Naval put in his uninvited tongue and told Baba that the engine was simply a beauty, a small amount if spent after overhauling it would repay tenfold as it would turn the wreck that it was at the, that it was at the time into some, some car. In fact, poor Naval's imagination had so dazzled him that he unhesitantly, unhesitantly, unhesitantly described it as raw gold. <laughs> as it Baba's, as it Baba's won't. Once a side suggestion is once a side suggestion is made in spite of his direct instruction, he falls in, he falls in readily, and the fourth worth authorized Naval to carry on the necessary overhauling. Then began the prolonged repairs. For days and months, Naval fumed, fretted and prescribed his big bulky body, trying to turn the raw, <laughs> the raw gold into ready gold, but it proved a wild goose chase. It proved a wild goose chase in the end. In spite of so much energy and money wasted after it, the court did not come up to high expectations to the to the high expectations. It was hardly valued at more than what was put in within it by way of overhauling, leaving aside the question of its original value. Thus poor Naval had to dispose it away, but that proved more trying to fill up numbers. And so after so much trouble, Naval's so-called raw gold is disposed of today to the great relief of all. Thanks, Mahu. Uh, Ernie, could you unmute and continue? Well, when Doctor was alone with Baba overnight, he was explained some aspects of love as follows. Baba began with the following quotation. Love originates first in the heart of the beloved. Unless the lamp burns, the moth will not be mad after it. 
continuing, Baba said, it is assumed that there is a lover and the beloved, and the connecting link between the two is love. Although God is love universal, let us, for the sake of explanation, suppose that God at first begins to love or attract the desirer, who, however, not understanding it, begins to resist. The moment that sufficient love has been created in the desirer for God, he then becomes indifferent. In this way, the process of attraction and repulsion continues for a long time, ultimately ending in the union of the two. This is exactly what Hafiz, Hafiz said, tries to explain in the following couplet. With one end of the hair in my hand and the other end in the friends, since years, the tug of war is going on, on this point. Friend here means beloved. Continuing, Baba said, in proportion to the love that you have for me, at some, other, at some such moments, you will hate me also. This hatred or repulsion is the resistance offered by you when I am trying to attract you towards me by my internal love. In time, you will begin to respond to my love with equal force, and then the force of my love will slow down. That is, I shall become indifferent. The legacy of love. The perfect master has love for all the members of his circle, and this love derived from Babajan and Maharaj will be shared with the members of the circle according to their connection with one or the other. January 29th, 1923. The day passed away in routine, excepting for the Mandali being rung for in the dining hall to hear Vajifdar, who had just returned from Najpur tell his experiences of his visit, especially in connection with his cricket play there and his meeting with Baba Tajuddin. The topic of Aziz, having received a letter from Mr. Paul Richards about his arrival in Bombay from Karachi and the former's request to Baba through Munshi for an interview, was also discussed. The Mandalay were all for Baba giving an interview if asked for. Also the question of publishing a printed pamphlet, correcting the exaggerated and false rumors spread in the press and public by mischievous persons about Baba and the Mandalay was also considered. Splintering hits. Doctor, who has been exempted by Baba from the cricket play in the morning to pass the time and in sleep instead, since late, is not quite finding the favor very fruitful. The back room facing the compound with scores of glass windows all around the two sides of the room occupied by the doctor has of late become a target for Baba to send his well-driven balls through. Occasionally, to the great merriment of all, Doctor used to bring out his head with half-blinking eyes whenever a pain went out with a crash and a, showering, and a showering of splintering glass in his room. So much so that because of teasing Doctor, Baba has almost cleared half the windows of glass. But Doctor, too, is grimly sticking to his sweet sleep. <laughs> But this morning, being rather sound asleep, doctor got a real shock because an exceptionally fat ball catching a big pain in the center. For about 10 minutes, he had to sit with his hands pressed against his heart. However, after this, Baba has asked doctor to change the time 
of his extra nap to the afternoon to avoid the repetition of the shock, even, even through accident. Although outsiders are not allowed interviews by Baba nowadays, one Chagumian singer came for a blessing and singing, and he was at once allowed in since Baba is so very fond of music. He sang for about half an hour and then departed. There, were, there was no Guta today. Instead, Baba, Maramji, Cox, and myself played cards upstairs while, while Doctor sat back, back to back against Baba by way of a support. I don't think Baba found the pillow very comfortable. January 31st, 1923, the divine breeze. There was a breeze in the afternoon when Dotner went in the office on duty and talked with Adi in the ordinary jocular manner. Baba, who, once, who happened to be there, suddenly checked Dotner, suddenly checked Dotner not to talk in that tone with Adi, who officiated there. Dotner became rather excited and talked on in an angry tone at which Baba became very angry and asked Dr. and Cox to leave the bungalow for Pune and come back in April. However, after an hour, Dr. was called upstairs. When he returned after some time, he informed me and Cox that peace had been declared upon his having promised Baba not to speak in an angry tone. Baba explained to Dr that when a master is in the most perfect and peaceful internal state, or that some internal, internal work is nearing completion and success, there is sometimes an overflow of the internal state externally. The external outburst is a shadow of the internal perfect state, and it's quite the opposite, and thus takes the form of abusive language, beating, etc. But whoever receives these is a fortunate man since these abuses and beatings work a good deal of benefit for him, especially in external affairs. Now you people, since your now you people, since your matter is settled and your connection with me is of the day of beginning that no power can alter. You have no need of these outbursts in the form of abuses and beatings, which I have completely put a stop to. And now if you cannot even bear my words, then it will be troublesome to both you and me. In that case, I shall have to give up mixing with people altogether. And then it will go very hard with you all. February 2nd, 1923. Dr. to Mullingar. As per arrangements made yesterday, Dr. left for Mullingar, Sharif, this morning at 5 a.m. to take part in the annual celebration of the saint's tomb on behalf of the Mandali. And consequently, he was excused from the morning prayers. Some extracts, some extracts from his diary are reproduced here. I started by the 5.30 Kalyan train, reaching there at about 7 a.m. Within 15 minutes, I caught hold of a carriage for, for, is that two rupees? For the seat and started henceforth. The carriage had only one passenger, me, since the people were returning from the fair as the ceremony had take, already taken place overnight. While today being Thursday, was the fair day. Reaching Bamanwadi at about 10, I began ascending the hill after half an hour with the, with the flower basket in my hand and reached the tomb at 12.30 p.m. With impunity, 
After performing ablutions, I went into the shrine and spread the flower sheet on the tomb and then offered prayers. Some loose flowers that I had found in the basket. I'd kept aside for other surrounding graves. Just when I went to take them, they were pounced upon by an unknown person. And in spite of my telling him that the flowers belonged to me and I had kept them there for other tombs, the man turned a deaf ear to me. Although a bit flurried at the, at the cool and impudence of the stranger, I checked myself at the thought of the sanctity of the tomb nearby. And secondly, Baba's words, which I suddenly remembered were, put the flowers on the tomb, put the flowers on the tomb, and after reciting the prayers, come away. On this, I gave up the idea of even visiting the other graves, far short of putting flowers. Owing to some quarrels amongst the devotees, the usual head devotee did not sit this year. But for all that the anniversary was, as per the rule, a successful, brilliant, and gay festival. After taking rest in a final prayer, I started descending back at 3 p.m. and took a carriage at Bomanwadi. On the return trip, I got an interesting companion in Mr. Abdul Latif of Malagan, one of the Sai Baba's admirers and the tutor, tutor of Bara Baba's two sons, who also knew Maharaj, Gustaji, etc. Reaching Dadar at about 10 p.m., I came to the Manzil forthwith and found Baba waiting for me in the veranda alone in the dark, all having retired to bed. Before retiring for the night, I accompanied Baba upstairs and related the above incidents in detail. Again, some trouble arose about doctor having overslept by an hour, followed by a breeze with Kastaji in the afternoon, when at the latter's mistake in not keeping Baba's food in the exact place shown by him, the food was thrown away and Baba declared he will go without food that night, which means the 24 hours fast will be continued without a break. In the evening, Baba did not take the usual bath as well. When all had retired for the night and a few remained about Baba and Gustaji, the former explained to the latter that all the excitement in the day was due to his having resolved to keep fast for 36 hours. Today is the 38th day that Baba is continuously observing fast. That is, that is eating and drinking once every 24 hours. While today's has been extended to 36 hours, Baba, doctor is asked by Baba to keep ready a glass full of fruit juice for him tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thanks, Ernie. Uh, I'll take another turn now. February 3rd, 1923, liquid food. Baba broke his fast after about 39 hours with some fruit juice prepared by Doctor. Thereafter, the following notice was put, on the, put up on the board. I have decided to keep on liquid food, such as tea, buttermilk, and aer aerated water till 15th February, 1923. From 11th to 15th, inst period singing, etc. I think it's instruction. Okay. On 15th, inst, inst, inst again, maybe instruction, feeding of 500 people and clothes for 100 poor, signed Merwan. The Guta was held at about 4 p.m. because of the music program in the evening. As arranged by Munshi, the Bakri Edi 
Gazel singer came at about 7 p.m. and continued his singing up to 10 p.m. for three hours. Baba did not seem to take keen interest in the singing and was most of the time in his room. He looked very ill and weak and said that he had five or six stools, very much like those he had in Ajmer, or Ajmer. When the singer was gone and all had retired for the night, Doctor and myself sat up with Baba till 12 p.m. The Perfect Master. During discussions on many subjects, the following points were explained by Baba. Realization is one only. The difference in masters lies in the power and the authority to use it. That which is given by a master to his charge man is not power. It is already in him, but the authority to use it. A perfect master in body form can work a lot of good for the after his death, he enjoys eternal bliss, and the power is there with him, but not the authority to use it. So wherever there is a tomb of the master, there the power is. But it is the faith which becomes the medium and utilizes the power, that power. It is for this reason that people generally derive benefits from the tombs of saints. Internal benefit can, however, only be imparted when the master is in bodily presence. From eternity, without beginning, there is only one perfect master that has come to this world from time to time. Mulana, Mulana Nayiz Niyaz, Mulana Niyaz Ahmed says, the names and signs of my friend are different in every epic. In features and distinctions, there is difference. But in fact, it is all one. The last and perfect form of that perfect master is that of Muhammad. There is nothing outside ourselves. All the seven heavens and spheres and earths and planes are within ourselves. The perfect master gives us nothing. He shows us the treasure that is within us. Duty, therefore, is authority. And it is for this reason that saints long to leave the mortal coil, which keeps them from enjoying the eternal bliss. Mahu, well, can you unmute? Continue, please. Sure. Thanks. Now it's February 4th, 1923. The Broken Toe. During some conversations at breakfast, Baba told Mustaji that in case he falls ill and all find him senseless and in a very dangerous condition, even then no doctor should be brought in, brought in spite of my order, end quote. The Guta was called this afternoon at 2 p.m. when all were asked to come with paper and pencil. After some minor points, after, after some minor points were discussed about domestic affairs, all were allotted the respective, the respective parts in the drama that has been decided to be enacted in the coming birthday celebrations. As a sample of their acting, Arjun, Rostam, Asma, Nervous, and Jal displayed their respective talents as imitation drunkards to the merriment of all. 
The Gutha was dispersed at 4 p.m. Between 5 to 6 p.m., a few games of ho-ho were played while preparations for Atiya Patiya, Atiya Patiya tonight are afoot. Naval is arranging to have a streams of electric bulbs across the compound to provide light. After supper, at about 9 p.m., the game started. The compound was flooded with brilliant illumination and all were in the best spirits. Baba also seemed to take a very keen interest in the game, although since evening, he was much reserved, dull, and seemed to be brooding over something. The game was in full swing, being continued since only half an hour, when all of it when all of a sudden, while running across the lines drawn on the ground for the game, Baba collided against Babu, Cycle Bala, with a terrific impact. Apparently, his right toe got dislocated. Next is a divine ordeal. The very next moment, Baba ran into the dining hall, limping on one foot. Immediately, he seemed to be suffering. It's, hold on, where is one word? Immediately, immediately, he seemed to be suffering excruciating, excruciating pain. His face was all aghast and pale and bits of perspiration came out of all over the face and body. He even vomited out the stomach contents. All the while, Baba kept on telling us that he was dying, that he wanted to do one thing, and quite the contrary has happened. The gay atmosphere was thus suddenly transformed into one of tense excitement. With anxious faces and in whispering tones, we discussed the possible means of relieving the pain when twice or thrice Baba repeated that the doctor would be brought. In, in the heat of excitement, <clears throat> we all were taken in. Even Gustaji, whom Baba had that very morning particularly instructed not to call in medical help for him in any case, and so Rostam and Nervous went out for a bone setter. Baba was seen to be suffering with violent internal shocks, so much so that in spite of so many of us trying to press and massage his arms and limbs, the whole body was thrilling and vibrating. In spite of the pains and the apparently terrible condition, Baba explained that he does not mind if instead of the toe, even the whole leg is broken. But it is the internal shocks that are taking the very life out of him and which the body is hardly equal to bear in this weak condition due to continuous fasting. He said he knew all this and it was one of the phases of his internal working which not being spent in the direction desired has come back upon him with such severity. After an hour or so, after an hour or so, the paroxysms of shock ceased and then measures were adopted to alleviate the external pain of the toe. In order 
in order to demonstrate that it was not really the dislocated toe that had caused him so much agony, Baba suddenly got up to the great relief of all and actually ran around the compound without any limp or lurch. Soon after, the bone setter arrived. But contrary to allowing him to treat the, the dislocated toe, Baba even refused him an inspection and the bone setter had to return back without even seeing his supposed patient. Although he was paid his full charges, which is 35 rupees, as it read, the doctor was much disappointed and even mystified. When Rostam, in an awkward way, finally told him that the patient was now all right and there was no need of any inspection, the doctor could not help putting in. Even if you don't require any further treatment from me, I won't insist. But what harm is there if I inspect the injury since I am here and have received my full fees? An accident sending you out at the late hours in search of medical help from a great distance, you now say, has proved a trivial affair. Perhaps it may develop seriously and there may be only a temporary lull in the pain. There may be only a temporary lull in the pain. Yet we somehow managed to take out the bone setter. So help and came to Baba in the dining room. Hot water was poured on the injured toe as fomination, fomentation, and then a medi uh, medicinal, and then the medi medicinal fruit applied. And finally, it was securely bandaged. Once again, the atmosphere became normal and all began to breathe freely. Thanks, Mahu. Uh, Ernie, could you uh, unmute and continue, please? The unfortunate one. Then addressing the party sitting around him, Baba asked, can anyone guess as to what is the meaning of this accident. Thereupon, one by one, all tried to solve the puzzle and gave the possible explanations as per respective opinions. And none came up to the mark, but none came up to the mark. Baba explaining further said, you must remember, I've told you very often that is the most unfortunate of the circle and that either he will go mad or die some death. All, acqui all acquiesced in this. Then, continue then continuing, Baba said, this shot concerns him. I tried for him, but failed. Really, he is the unfortunate of the lot and you will hear something about him within a week or so. It being past midnight, Baba asked all to go to bed excepting doctor. February 5th, 1923, the silent alarm. Doctor repeated an interesting incident witnessed by him that last night. While he was asked to sit up by Baba up to 1.30 a.m. as follows. I sat by Baba chafing his hands. And as the time given to me was approaching near, I was at a loss to understand how to know whether it was 1.30 a.m. or not. I thought, if I don't go away at the given time, his order will be broken. 
And if I get up, his sleep will be disturbed. Such were the thoughts running in my mind. When to my great relief and surprise, Baba moved in bed and opening up his eyes, asked me to see what time it was. I got another surprise. It was exactly 1.30. When I informed this to Baba, he asked me to put out the lamp and go. Baba was not feeling quite well today. Besides the painting toe, which was considerably inflamed, he was again passing loose watery stools. The wonder of it being that he had nothing in the stomach. What, whatever little he had taken yesterday evening was almost all brought out last night after the accident. The unknown interview. After sunset, when Baba was standing in the front veranda, Mr. Chothia, a solicitor, came there for Baba's blessing. Not having seen Baba ever before, Mr. Chothia, without recognizing him, recognizing him as such, shook hands and talked with him for some minutes. After Baba had slipped in to the amusement of all, Mr. Chothia was explained that all the while he was speaking with one whom he had specially come to see, that is, Mayor Baba himself. The visitor then was taken round the bungalow and shown the separate rooms and the office where he was also given the dream register to read. He was also invited to partake of the homely food cooked for the Mandalik, which was complied with. February 6th, 1923, a test call. About 4.30 this morning, when we were taking baths, et cetera, as usual, all were rung for upstairs. The gathering was rather funny. Almost all were semi-dressed. Some were with actual toothbrushes stuck in the mouth and soap boxes clutched in their hands or dental powder smeared on teeth. A couple of us had just rushed straight from the bathrooms without towels and sheets round, 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 wound round, and water still dripping from our bodies. The business for which all were stampeded upstairs so urgently meant only the admonishing of Naval and Masaji for talking about the bungalow and Mandalay affairs with outsiders in a burst of confidence or for the purpose of gossip. All were asked not to speak of the Mosul affairs with the outsiders, and Masaji and Novel were specially warned to hold their tongue, keep their tongues in check, in check. After this, all were asked to repeat dreams seen overnight. A few only had seen dreams, and those, too, were not very interesting when repeated by them. Thereupon, all were dismissed and asked to finish the morning program as usual. At supper time, the drama pieces were distributed to the parties concerned, and the following notice was put up on board by Baba. Everyone should particularly note, when out of duty, when out of every duty allotted by me, and only in leisure time, should he learn his part by heart. Can you, can you read this again, please? Sure. Everyone should particularly note that when out of every duty allotted by me and only in leisure time, should he learn his part by heart. Signed to Marijuana. February 8th, 1923, the canopy. A huge tent is put up today over the back compound in connection with the coming Hindu festival and birthday celebrations for, for which other arrangements also are in full swing. 
in spite of taking a keen interest in all these affairs and showing great activity, Baba really seems to be very pulled down. The watery stools begun since the third are continuing to be passed out. He has had about eight stools, very profuse and watery during the last 24 hours. In spite of his passing, fasting of 24 hours, when the food taken is very light and little. Baba, when he used to eat a lot before his fasting program, always complained of constipation and scanty stool. When closely observed, many points are marked in Baba to be quite contrary to nature's expectations. The master. While Baba was sitting, while Doctor was sitting up with Baba after the rest of us had retired for the night, reading the Tashkir Kwashu, Memories of Gashu, the former asked him as to why Gas Ali Shah found it necessary to acknowledge 19 masters, out of whom 11 were Muslims and eight Hindus. Explaining Baba, explaining, Baba said, really speaking, there is one master who gives re realization. It is for knowledge, Dayan, or Afan, as referred to by Hindus and Muslims respectively, that sometimes it is necessary to approach one or more masters. It also happens that the master who gives realization also gives understanding. In my case, Baba John gave me realization. And for understanding, I had to go to Maharaj, who took eight years to finish the process of understanding. During this period of my process of understanding, if I had had connection with some others, I would have gone to many for such understanding. Such masters who advance the student are also entitled to be called a master, although in the real sense, there is only one master. Uh, uh, thank you, Ernie. Uh, we'll pick up here next week. Um.